Hey everybody, welcome. Today we're going to be checking out my Comma 3 device from Comma.ai. It's a level 2 uh, advanced driver assist system, or ADAS. And this company that it comes from, called Comma.ai, has been around 5 or 10 years, I think. They're only selling something like 250 units per month, so everyone I've talked to has never even heard of this thing. But basically you plug it into your car and it allows you to have a much improved cruise control. Um, and uh, yeah, it was started by this guy George Hotz, aka GeoHot, five, ten years ago. And uh, at that time, Elon Musk was trying to get him to work for Tesla to work on their autopilot systems and their ADAS systems. But he declined and continued to work on this comma.ai system. Um, so you can get it now for about $1,500 and it'll arrive at your house in two days. It's a very easy setup, it takes like 30 minutes to set up the device. You just plug it in to your ODB port and um, stick a sticker on the windshield and then in a couple days you're ready to go after the adhesive cures. Um, it's only $1,500 so in terms of like costs of a car it's not that huge um, especially if you're going to be taking a big road trip like I am pretty soon to drive across the country it's really helpful to have these improved cruise control. Uh, some things you need to look for in a car if you want to install one of these systems you need to have uh, sufficient steering wheel torque. So what you can look for for that is uh, cars with uh, active lane centering and then they also need to have some adaptive cruise control. Um, and Comma.ai has lists of cars that are compatible and I actually use on their GitHub they have a list of cars with um, kind of more detail than on their regular website and uh, so you can find the cars that are able to, s to start from a complete stop and have low speed cruise control as well as good steering wheel torque. So most, I guess, Hyundais that are more recent and Kias have pretty good steering torque. So I ended up with this 2019 Hyundai Santa Fe. And uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. And let's uh, check out what it looks like and how it drives. Okay, so. The system is up here, uh, and what? So first thing you have to do is get this sticker and stick that on the windshield up here. You can kind of see it through the windshield. So first you clean it with a little alcohol pad, and then you stick the sticker up there. Um, I made a mistake of not letting the alcohol fully dry the first time I did it, so. Yeah, I don't know if that is the reason for some of the bubbles on there, but it wasn't the best. And uh, then while that's drying, what you can do is you have to take off this... Uh, let's see if I can do this one-handed. Probably not. Uh, I need a way to set this down. Okay, so you have to take off this uh, cover for the rear view mirror. here it's pretty easy when you have two hands one hand is a little bit harder <laughs> yikes uh, yeah so that's the cover um, hope I didn't break anything <laughs> and uh, so then what they, the device has this, uh, so you get the device, you get this cable that goes from the device into this harness and this harness plugs into whatever this is up here. I'm not even sure what this is. Some like either, I don't think it's the radar. I don't know what it is, but there's a cable plugging in there. So you plug that in and then it just splits that into the phone. And then this other cable, uh, it also splits it into this. I think it's an RJ 45 cable. Uh, and then you can string that up here along the top and down. Or I think I put it behind, I pulled off this trim, put it behind the trim, and then down on the side. It goes all the way down here. And um, yeah, it's tucked away under here somewhere. And then it goes into the ODB port here. There's just a plug that goes in right there. And that's it. That's the whole system, and then the first time you boot up the device, 
it will, uh, yeah, it'll have some, some uh, like startup and then it will prompt you to input a, a web address to install from. And you just put in like comma.ai slash setup slash master, something like that. It's in the instructions, installs the software, take it on a short drive and that calibrates it. And then you're good to go to use it. Um, the other things are in the menu here, you've got these toggles for experimental mode. Um, you can turn off open pilot, which is the, the level two ADAS. And then you can also enable these different experimental mode. Um, those don't use your cruise control speed set. So they seem to drive a little bit slow right now, but it also works with stop signs and stop lights. So we'll check that out a little later. But let me put this all back together and let's take it for a spin. Okay, so even in a neighborhood at slow speeds, you can turn on the cruise with the cruise button at the set point and it will actually work just fine. You can see it's planning out the route and it can see the edges of the road at the red. The problem is it is not able to see stop signs on the standard chill mode. But as we'll see a little bit later, you can do that on experimental mode. And obviously it's not going to be able to handle like a left turn like this across traffic because it's only forward facing cameras. It's got two forward facing cameras, one driver facing camera to make sure you're paying attention. Uh, so we're going to go over to one of these highways here that's high speed and kind of show you what it's made for, which is cruise control on the highway. That's the main purpose of this thing. So even on here, I'll go ahead and set the cruise control, set it up to 45, 46, the speed limit here. And uh, hands are off the wheel, so as long as I'm paying attention, it's fine. If it, if the inter interfacing camera detects that I'm not paying attention, it's gonna like slow down and pull over, I think. But yeah, you can see it's doing a fine job of keeping within the lane and the speed limit, obviously. But uh, yeah, in the standard mode, it's not really gonna take exits for you, I don't think. Maybe, I haven't tried it on this one yet, but I'll go ahead and get on the fast road here. So I can, even on this now, I can already set uh, cruise control up to, it's 70 I think is the speed limit. So set it up to that. We'll let it take care of this merging. And obviously it doesn't, I mean, it has a driver facing camera, but it's not really able to see like what's behind you. So you've got to really um, yeah, pay attention if you're gonna do, like do a lane change or merging, it's not gonna be able to handle that flawlessly. But it can do a lane change for you. All you do is put on your blinker and then you give it a little nudge and that works fine. So here we are cruising, hands free. Pretty nice. So what I'm planning on using this for is for some really long road trips and it's just very tiring when you're driving for like eight hours and you have to constantly micro adjust the steering wheel and keep in the lane. So even though the stock uh, lane keeping systems can do that for you, what I found is they do an okay job, but not great, not as good as this. And um, uh, what else? Yeah, they also require you to like keep weight on the steering wheel, whereas this one you can actually take your hands all the way off. Turn off the car. It says experimental mode's on, but I feel like it's not. All right. So, turn it on. Okay, so now I can see in the warning lights, it says the like collision avoidance system is off. And let's see if it handles this stop sign. Stopped at the stop sign. 
guess I don't have a destination for it, so maybe <laughs> that's partially why. It's also driving only 15 miles per hour, which is pretty slow for a residential street like this, which is fine to drive slower, but definitely you're going to annoy the cars behind you. All right, let's see if it will take a right for me. Cool, kind of rolled the stop sign, but that worked. We're also kind of in the middle of the road right here. <laughs> it should be like more on the right. And we're still going pretty slow, like 18. Let's see. Let's have it go left here and see if it can handle this. I don't think it's gonna be able to handle this at all. Paying attention, yep. <laughs> no, I just can't handle this. So it's like a split lane road here and I guess it's too much for it right now. All right, let's... Uh, really want to see it try a stoplight, so we're going to go over here to let it try one of those. Oof, yeah. This is driving 25 miles per hour and we're on a 45. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, I don't know, it doesn't, I don't think it's integrating map data to get the speed limit or something. Or maybe it needs to see a speed limit sign to know what the speed limit is, or maybe it just needs to know the speed I'm already driving at, I'm not sure. But yeah, it is experimental mode after all. So we have a red light coming up here, but there's cars anyway, so even if we weren't using experimental mode, it would detect that. But it is slowing down much sooner, which I do like a lot better. So that's pretty nice. Oh, it's getting confused. It's getting really confused. And the person behind me is honking. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Also, uh, yeah, so this road I was driving the other night and I found it. Yeah, because it has these sort of like bends back and forth with turn lanes on the right. It was having a, a tough time handling those. Yeah, this experimental mode obviously is not really good for just using every day. So let's uh, let's go ahead and turn this off. Uh, yeah, the one thing I did want to see it do is navigate a little bit. So maybe I'll. I mean, I guess we saw it take a right turn. see it go here around this curve see if it can handle this roundabout this one is a little bit tricky and it is getting majorly confused here <laughs> not at all yeah not roundabout ready but Again, this is not really a system that's made for this sort of like neighborhood and like dense city driving. It's really made much more for highway cruise control for long distances. So uh, let's go check out a little bit more of that and then we'll finish this video up. Okay, so we're gonna turn off experimental mode, turn off the experimental longitudinal control, cars off. Gotta turn it back on to switch this back on. And let's uh, let's take this for just a regular spin. So let's see if the non-chill mode, or the sorry, the regular chill mode, non-experimental. Oh yeah, here's some really bad sun glare too. I guess it's doing okay with that. Here's a car. Yeah, this is a tricky situation.
again, yeah, on these normal streets, stop and go type traffic, uh, it's gonna do an all right job. Especially on, on like interstates, highways, well-marked lines. It's gonna handle all that for you just fine. Obviously the experimental mode is still really far away, I would say. Not really far away, but they've probably got another six months or longer of work to really get something working there well. But for my purposes, for cruising like eight hours on the, on the uh, interstate, or highway or freeway or whatever, I think it's gonna do really great for that and it's gonna save a lot of just mental energy having to drive for like 10 hours at a time. So there we have it, and that was the system. As we could see, the experimental mode is meh, kind of sketchy, not so great, but it's supposed to be that way, it's for R&D. With the more production mode, the chill mode, it works really well on um, most streets. It can handle curves pretty well, and it works super well on just open stretches of roads that are long and straight. So, um, that's about it. See you later. Hope you enjoyed it.